All right, now let's uh, use the guillotine threat against the reverse half guard. So when we're talking about the reverse half guard, basically we're talking about the back step position. So we will have gotten ourselves here in front of our partner's knee, and either we've done this like really technical kind of shin circle back step, or we've thrown the big back step, and we've ended up here like this. Now, usually our partner is going to be like, line up your reverse half guard the way you normally do. Yeah, there you see how our partner is turning our, us, us this way, and he's going to be trying to grab me. Like usually, he's going to be trying to grip my hip, grip my arm. Alternately, he's going to come up and grip my head. This is a really kind of common scenario here, All right? So if he's got this kind of control and we're connected, he's going to start sweeping me over. Just be gentle with my knee. So he starts to move me this way. If I start to resist that, he's going to be able to back roll and take me over this way. So the, the reverse half guard is actually a really potent weapon. Not a lot of people are good at it. Uh, but the people that are, are excellent at it. It's a niche position. If you want to learn about it, look up Jake McKenzie, who's a phenomenal Canadian black belt. He's got a great instructional, uh, I believe it's called high precision half guard. Totally check it out. So in this reverse half position, if my knee is bent and he's able to kind of load me up, none of my options are really going to work. I need to make sure that when I land here in this position, that let's just rotate around a little bit. Stop here, okay. See how Rory's heel is curling against my shin? If he's able to do that and lift his hip, he activates this lever, both of them actually. So now let's come back down. So if I'm able to extend my leg and push back against this leg, can't really do that. So it's important that I'm not be curling my heel. Normally I'm curling my heel because I'm trying to access the 411 position. But in this case, I'm not going to be curling my heel because that's enabling his position. I'm gonna be straightening it and backing my hip up. So now if he wants to load me up, it's gonna be trickier to do, and I can actually start to pummel with him. So he's gonna to have to resort to that other leg. This is a lot more comfortable for me, because now if he tries to turn me that way, not a whole lot happens. I would really need my foot to be stuck on the other side. So let's go back. So just be aware of this leg fighting principle. If the left leg is curling against my heel, I'm gonna be floated. If the right leg is curling against my heel, my right leg being inside the half guard, it's really hard for him to float me. Can move me a little bit, but I can still kind of put my butt on the ground. All right, so let's go back to that initial like back step sort of thing. Straighten out, pummel a little bit, get your leg free, start to try to extract it. Ideally, this is what we're talking about. Neither of his legs are covering my shin or my instep. So I'm like this. My, basically, the sole of my foot is pressing against his calf. So now I'm good. Now I've, I've created a reverse half guard where I'm not immediately being threatened with a sweep. Whether my shoulder is in or not, let's rotate back towards the camera here. Whether my shoulder is in or not doesn't really matter. What matters is that he not be able to connect to my neck and now connect your hands. Now I'm so there's, there's no attacks from here. So let's just, so we don't really want to emphasize this sort of shoulder pressure so much. We more want to emphasize backing our hips out. And so now we're just going to engage in a little bit of a hand fight battle. He's going to try to grab my head and I'm just going to frame his armpit. I'm gonna like Cosby frame him over here. We're gonna battle, we're gonna battle, and then we're gonna end up over here. Notice my hand is still on the inside. I didn't allow him the underhook. Now I can lift my hip, my foot is gonna come inside, just that same position we were talking about earlier, blocking his shin. Now I can come up and thread the guillotine through. If he goes to move me, he's gonna to have to open his feet up, and I'm gonna be able to pummel out and move to the mount. So he's gonna keep his feet together, his shins together, and I'm just gonna use my foot to pry my leg out, and now I'm gonna replace this shin. And this is the launching point for my guillotine attacks. So, I got here from a back step. I made sure that I backed up and did a little bit of leg pummeling to free my foot, and then I pummeled here. I'm basically sitting on my butt the whole time. I'm not super worried about him sweeping me as long as he doesn't control this arm. Because if he tries to like bridge any move, I'm just gonna be able to post. So as long as I'm always able to put my hand here or block him here, put my elbow on the ground, and I, he's not able to load this lever up, I'm okay. And we're just gonna pummel. He's almost always gonna have this arm here because that's the nature of the position he wants to be holding my hip. So basically, I should be able to win a hand fight because I have two arms. Anytime he bridges to push me over, I'm just posting and recovering. So as long as I win this, now I can come over top. If he were to release my hip, as I do this, then I go back and I threaten the 411. Again, if you don't have a multiple threat in a lot of positions, people can just spam one thing. So we need to be aware that the grip on my hip is what's enabling me to attack the guillotine because I can go two, 
against one and thread the guillotine, particularly if he gets onto his side trying to come back in. It becomes super easy to threaten that guillotine. Right? Alternately, I can be threatening the Kimura, and as he tries to turn in to like come up on his I'll attack the guillotine there. So those are our two double threats. If the hand leaves the hip, I reach down and grab the top leg, scoot, put myself in the 411, get ready to attack heel hooks. If he keeps his back flat on the mat and I'm not able to thread, I'll be separating and attacking the guillotine, which will cause him to turn back in and try to close his structure. And I will thread the guillotine, still holding his wrist. Shin comes in. Everything else is the same. We've kind of got all this before, but in case you're just watching this video, I lift my hip, post my head on the ground, back my hips out. I'm going to turn my right knee to the ground as I connect my hands. He's going to cover my high elbow guillotine, so I'm going to go with the Rafa style finish, protrude my hip, and make sure that my shin is blocking. Let's turn and give you one more angle. Reverse half, pummel, make sure your hands are free. There we go. Still pummeling. I can threaten the Kimura as he turns. I thread the guillotine. My foot is underneath the thigh. I make my grip, he covers it, no big deal. I switch to the Rafa grip, come across, hip in, finish. If at any point this isn't working, that's totally fine. I make sure that I lift my hip up and turn my knee so that I can move into the mount, cover, and I can just base out and mount him or attempt to finish with the alternate variations. This is a really particular position, right? Like again, if you're not, if you don't have someone at your gym that's good at this, you can just kind of backstep into a reverse half and pass right from there. This is designed to work against somebody who's put a fair bit of time into developing the reverse half guard, is gonna have specific counter options against the things that you're trying to do, and this is how you diffuse them and get to the guillotine. If none of these specificities of a good reverse half guard are in place, and you just backstep and kind of land here, and someone just turns in, which is quite possible, we're just gonna wrap up the arm in guillotine, allow them to build to their knees while building this hook, flip them back over, go into the mount, or step out, back out, fit it like, that's easy. You should be able to just construct that on your own at this point. Uh, you, you don't really need my help, but the, spe the specificities of the reverse half guard, it, it's a minefield. It's a position that guys who are good at can camp out in all day and just wait until they get their preferred grip and then sweep you or take your back. So just be aware of the leg pummeling, be aware of the hip position, be aware of the hand fighting and not letting somebody cover your posture and deny you the ability to base and you should be able to make something happen.